Hello everyone, my name is Eric Jones, better known as the Turf Teacher. We are going to discuss Appendix A, which is professional conduct, Appendix B, training for the worker protection standard, and Appendix C, record keeping form for restricted and agricultural use pesticides. This is your last video in your North Carolina Pesticide Applicator Certification Corps Manual. So congratulations on finishing all the lectures uh, for the Corps Manual. This is, however, not your last lecture for Unit 2. Remember, the course is broken down into four units. And what we are doing, what we are doing, we are looking at these appendixes. I don't have any slides created for it. We're just going to talk briefly about each one of them because they're very, very short. They start on page 175 in the core manual. And let's get started with professional conduct. Guys, that's basically what it is talking about. We want to conduct ourselves as professionals. We want to be a professional company with legit applicators and legit licensed pesticide applicators. And the first thing that Appendix A is talking about is that you have to be familiar with the laws and regulations when it comes to uh, supervising um, applicators. Now I know for a fact that this goes on all the time. I hear of someone uh, getting pulled by an inspector. You know, the inspector doesn't have a blue light or anything like that, but what it is, they do follow you. They might get behind you and follow you to the next job site and then pull in behind you and then identify themselves as an inspector and then look on your truck, ask to see your pesticide license, things of that nature. But I'm always hearing stories of, well, I spray underneath my uncle's license. He's been licensed since, uh, uh, back in the 80s and I started my business and, and I, I, I spray underneath him. Well, what comes to find out is that the uncle may only have a private uh, applicator's certification. They might not even hold the license, but guys, you have to work underneath the direct supervision. That's exactly what the law says. Now, the direct supervision doesn't mean, you know, standing over your back watching you spray every application, but what it does mean is that you can only spray with a license or under the direct supervision for your employer. And you have to work at the office that the licensed professional is at. So if you have multiple branches in your, in your office or in your company, each office has to have a licensed pesticide applicator to do the direct supervision. Now that means that they need to be available by phone. They need to show up at job sites where there's an issue. They don't necessarily have to watch minute by minute what every applicator's doing, but they have to uh, have that license uh, holder in each office and only applicators uh, that work out of that branch office can uh, apply pesticides with uh, that person's direct supervision. So using your uncle's license or your dad's license and y'all have separate businesses and stuff, guys, that doesn't work. That is part of professional conduct. And then it starts going into public and customer communications. Now, this communication needs to be expressed to your clients. Hey, you've got to get CEUs. You know, once you get your license, you've got to get uh, 10 continuing education credits within your five a year period certification. That needs to be advertised, guys. You need to be talking about that. Every time you go and get continuing education, that needs to be blasted on your social media sites and your website. Hey, I am a professional. I have a professional license. I'm going to get my continuing education. Uh, you need to keep up with current pesticide regulations. You need to know enough to ask for help when you don't have all the answers. And never tell a client, well, a mistake or something that you don't know. They'd much rather hear say, sir, ma'am, I really don't know what this insect is or what this pest is. I'm gonna take a sample of it and I'm gonna get back with you. We have a lab in Raleigh, with North Carolina, Department of Agriculture, you can send in stuff, they'll identify, or you can run by your pesticide dealers, guys. Those are some of your, you know, the experts that we should be using every day and our extension agents, call them. Hey, I don't know what this is, what is it? You can take pictures and do it. Guys, there's even apps on your phone. You can take a picture of plants and it'll tell you what plant it is. And for insects, that's, that's the best way. But never tell a client a wrong answer. It's more professional to tell them, I don't know, I'll get back with you. You need to know the safety and environmental aspects of your job. You need to talk or take the initiative to communicate with your customers. And you need to have that professional appearance. Yes, guys, we work outside. 
and you see the turf teacher all the time, I'm usually in a t-shirt and jeans and sneakers. That's my style. But if I was going to a high profile client or when I'm in our elite landscape truck, I'm usually in an elite polo, elite landscape polo or a nice button up. You know, my truck's clean. I'm, I'm, I'm doing the part. I'm acting as the manager, as the owner. I am representing my company very well. You need to do that. You don't need to show up with blue tracker dial over your, your shirt and, your, and have your t-shirt untucked, look professional when you show up to the client's house. And when you're talking to your clients, never use words as uh, environmentally friendly or safe. It's safe for children and our products are safer than any other product out there. Never state that. You're going to confuse your client and you don't want to give them any misleading information. Don't use terms like organic or natural or least toxic. Guys, just tell them the truth. Be honest with them. This is a pesticide. We are using this pesticide because of this. You always want to communicate with them what you've identified in the yard, why it is important to use this pesticide, how this pesticide is going to work, and the re-entry period before you can let the dog out on the yard. You need to be 100% honest with them. And this is called client education. Educate your clients on what you are doing and they're gonna respect you and you're gonna have, you're gonna have a lifelong customer if you're honest with them. Uh, acceptable terms to use though, is that we have products that have a risk, uh, risk or they are less toxic than some of the other products that are out there. It's okay to say that. Provide customers with pamphlets and information that you get from the dealers again. Download stuff off the internet, create brochures for it, advertise on your social media the types of products that you're using. Guys, when you educate and once you become the media company versus the landscape or the advertising company, and I shouldn't have said landscape, but you gotta understand that landscape contractors, pesticide applicators, we also have to be media personnel. We don't need to be advertisers. We need to inform our customers of the situations and of the products that we use and of our services that we provide. We don't need to say 10% off for this. We need to stick to educating our clients and they're gonna love us for it. Um, so again, define the what and the why. Well, we found this, that's our what. Why do we need to get rid of it? And this is the pesticide we're gonna use to get rid of this insect or to get rid of this fungus. We got to educate them. IPM for school, guys. We've studied integrated pest management uh, in depth in unit one. Uh, and as you know, that uh, IPM has been implemented for schools uh, since August 1st of 2011. That's when they came full force into it. But when pesticide applications are gonna be made near schools, they have to notify the parents of guardians. Um, they need to have, provide them with this um, notification. Uh, prior to 72 hours in advance of any non-scheduled or non-exempt pesticide applications. And then, um, of course, have the IPM implementation by October of 2011. And that's, that's good. That is good news that they're implementing IPM uh, around our schools. Now, if most of you go to your kids or grandkids' schools, you're gonna notice there's a lot of weeds in the beds, there's a lot of weeds in the turf grass. That's A-OK. -okay. You know, I'd much rather see that than to know that some of these dangerous chemicals are sprayed around children. Uh, a few weeds does not bother me. Remember, you know, Eric's uh, threshold's a lot lower than our higher end clients. So how to answer customer questions. Guys, you need to prepare for this. You need to do some role playing with your pesticide applicators. You need to have training on that. They're gonna ask questions and you need to let your applicators know, hey, it's okay. If you don't know the answer, just tell, tell the customer, say, hey, Miss Smith, I don't know what this is. I'm gonna take it back to our shop. Uh, Eric's there, he's gonna be able to properly identify that and he or I will give you a call back and we're gonna find out what this is and we're gonna make sure that we take care of it for you. Again, let them know. That's how you communicate. And guys, sometimes admitting that you don't know something can be an embarrassment. So do the role playing with your, uh, with your technicians that are out there applying these pesticides under your direct supervision. And again, your professional image, guys, we're spraying pesticides. People don't like us to begin with. I mean, it, it is, we're fighting a never ending battle, 
people are always going to say, why are you spraying? You're destroying our environment. No, when it really gets down to it, we're protecting the environment. Some of these diseases and insects we need to take care of and we need to, to, to apply the pesticides. And it's all about our customer's satisfaction anyway. But again, we're always fighting that, guys. So uphold the professional image. Make sure that you store them right. Make sure you transport your chemicals right and uphold that professional image for our industry. Years ago, years ago, guys, uh, the green industry built up this image that we become uh, landscapers because we can't do nothing else. They don't realize that most of us are in this business because we have a passion for the green industry. Our blood is green. It's not red. We truly bleed green. We have the green thumbs. We do what we love. And so when you're able to work in your passion, guys, you know, that's why we're some of the happiest people really on earth. And people get a little bit jealous that we get to enjoy the outside, that we get to be outside when it's a, a 70 to 70 degree day spring afternoon or a um, 65 degree day fall morning. People are envious of that, especially when they have to go to a cubicle. And then when they see that we're actually spraying pesticides, they kind of get a little uh, furious at us as well as being envious of us because we are living our passion. now. Moving on to Appendix B, training for the worker protection standard, guys. Um, you know, this needs to be conducted by a certified uh, pesticide applicator, the, the type of training, or someone who has completed a WSP trainer uh, program that is certified by the North Carolina Department of Agriculture and Consumer Services. There's two types of training. There's basic and then there's complete. Now, there's this poster that you could get and hang up in your shop. So if you hire somebody and you go over the poster with them and have it hanging up and, and do that, that brief introduction with that, that's going to be okay for the basic training. Uh, complete training um, uh, consists of 11 additional topics. And the, the uh, complete training needs to be implemented for every new employee uh, by at least their sixth day of employment. So they're going to get the basic day one so you can actually get them to work. But by day six, they need to have the complete training. Handlers and early entry workers must be trained before they begin work, though, because those are the guys that are coming actually like into the, the pesticide areas. They're the ones handling it, and they're the ones that actually go in to the areas uh, a lot sooner than most people um, because they've got to get in there and get to work. They've got to be trained uh, before they begin. Early entry refers to people who will enter the treated area before the uh, REI expires, and that's usually uh, within the first four hours uh, of an application. Handler training consists of complete training plus six additional topics that emphasize health hazards and concerns. Early entry for workers consists of the complete training program with additional instruction on labeling, health hazards, first aid, and the proper use of PPE. The training resources, um, uh, there's training resources, guys, that we can get for this. Now, workers and handlers must be retrained every five years. You got to do that. And we have to keep a record on file of when these training dates happen for each one of these people. Now, um, employers who are currently certified to apply restricted use pesticides and who can verify that they have trained within the five last five years are not required to be retrained. So let's say you hire an employee and you get them through this um, basic and then their complete training and then they become a, a handler or an early entry personnel and then they have to say, hey, Eric, I really, I, I, I kind of dig this. I want to, uh, to go and get um, my certification. I want to take that class uh, that the turf teacher teaches and, and get my pesticide certification and then possibly go ahead and, and uh, pay the $75 and get my license. And you help them do that and they're still working for you. Well, then they won't need this uh, recertification or this training every five years because they're going to have to do their CEs and we know that they are licensed professionals when they go through this program. And so that kind of wraps up the, um, the worker protection standard, guys. And then on page 180 is Appendix C. This is a record keeping form for restricted and agricultural use pesticides. Now, this is a great, great um, uh, documentation, guys. Go ahead and actually um, photocopy it. Use it in your business if you're doing it. I mean, this is a great way to document um, every time you put out a pesticide, guys. I would almost do it for every time I put out a chemical. 
you know, this needs to be in the truck with your, with your technicians. But it's got the date, the time plan, the time completed of the application, the restricted entry uh, interval, and that's going to be different for each pesticide. What crop is it or commodity? The brand names of the chemical, the EPA registration number, the active ingredients, the size of the treated area. Hey, we treated a, a 15,000 square foot lawn today. Total amount applied. We uh, put out um, 10 gallons to that 15 square feet. It had so many ounces of active ingredient. And then the applicator's name and their certification number. And guys, you keep a running total of that. And if there's any issues or you get pulled by the pesticide inspector, they may ask for that. They may ask, how many ounces or how much product did you apply to this yard? If they pull up to you and you're actually making an application, they're going to start asking you stuff like that. Hey, did you calibrate your equipment? How much chemicals in the tank? Things of that nature. So guys, get in the habit of doing the right thing because doing the right thing is always the right thing. Guys, this is Turf Teacher. I will see you in the next lecture. You've got two more lectures for Unit 2. It's going to be two math um, lectures. It's uh, calibration without math. And then we're going to look at, uh, oh, I can't remember the last one, um, the name of it, but we're going to look at two of them on how to actually uh, do some other math problems. And then you do have your uh, pesticide calculations worksheet to complete. And there is a video of me working the problems out on the board that's uh, already up on the website. So guys, I appreciate it. This is Turf Teacher. I'll see you in the next lecture.